Hey guys, welcome to Drawing with Abby. In this video, I wanted to share how I created this illustration using Cliff Studio Paint's brand new Shading Assist feature. So let's get at it. I'll be drawing on my S22 Ultra and I'm speeding up the playback by about four times. First, we're gonna start off with a sketch. Since I'm more interested in testing out that new feature than creating an elaborate illustration, I'll do a relatively simple standing pose. Even with a simple standing pose, I'm going to be checking my illustration by flipping my canvas as often as possible. This is going to reveal situations where I have bad proportions or reveal that the weighting of my character isn't correct. So I'm going to go ahead and make those adjustments by using the distort tool to fix the positioning of my legs, then also adjust the proportions of the legs in comparison to the torso. Next, we'll get into the inking. Just like the pose, I'll keep the ink simple, opting for a clean outline approach instead of a whole lot of cross hatching or detailed line work. I'm using the G pen, and I set the stability to about 25 to achieve that clean cartoony line work. You'll notice that I'm moving pretty fast with my line art here, even with the footage sped up as much as it is. And that's because I'm less concerned about intersecting lines or overlapping tangents, and more concerned about creating consistent, flowing, confident lines. In order to clean up some of those tangents, I'll just simply use the opacity swatch for the pen brush uh, to erase and remove those unwanted lines. Now it's time to get to the flats. For this type of drawing, flatting is actually a fairly fast process. First, I'll make sure to set the line art layer as a reference layer. I'll grab my paint bucket tool and make sure to check off the refer multiple option and tap on that reference icon. On a new layer, I'll stop dropping in my flats pretty quickly. When flatting, it's always a good rule of thumb to select colors that are a little bit more dull or have less vibrancy to it. And that's because uh, during your shading process, you're going to be adding a lot of that vibrancy and a lot of that contrast back in. Finally, we get to the shading assist tool. I select my flats layer and I head over to edit shading assist. This will trigger a pop-up window and add a lighting controller on my canvas. Moving this controller around changes the light source direction as well as its strength. It's actually pretty cool how the machine learning tool can auto detect the shape of the surfaces. If I go ahead and save and apply the change, I can see that Cliff Studio generates new layers into my document with each new layer representing a tone in the cell shading. I'm not super thrilled with the results, so let's go back to the shading assist. This time, I'm going to change the shading method from cell shading to smooth shading. This has a more soft airbrushy style to the shading. I also noticed that the on canvas controller has additional inputs to control the strength of the highlights and the shadows. I can also play around with the hue saturation of the effect, which is nice. While the smooth shading looks pretty good, the cell shading from our first attempt still looks pretty jagged around the edges. While Clip Studio doesn't have an automatic way of fixing this, let's see if we can address it on our own. I grab my pen brush and I start improving the edges of the cell shading shadows. I'm actually pretty impressed how well the system picks up the shapes of the anatomy and the fabric in the illustration. However, I'm surprised it didn't do a better job auto detecting the face shapes better than it did especially when you consider all the face detection software we have out there. Okay, it's looking better. Time to polish it up with coloring my lines and adding some highlights. All in all, the Shading Assist feature is a cool idea, but it's in really early stages with the technology. I mean, seeing how AI has generally taken off, I can see this feature improving dramatically over time. Right now though, it's not something I would use other than a quick way to understand lighting or use it as a reference tool. I did appreciate how well thought out the controls were. 
I just wish there was an auto smoothing feature for the edges. But what do you guys think? Do you see yourself using this tool in your own artwork? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you want to see more. Until next time, keep drawing.